Hello friends, today we are going to be talking about the first arc of Vagabond, which would be known as the Takizo arc, and I am joined by my husband John and my friend Patrick, whose channel will be linked down below. I know that this is one of Sean and Patrick's favorite manga series, so I'm going to let yeah. them kick it off. I'm going to specifically let Patrick kick it off. Um, we're just going to kind of start with, with a general <laughs> chat, just some of our thoughts. This will be spoilery if you're not sure, so just maybe come back to this later if you haven't read that arc yet. Yeah, we're talking about the first arc, right? Yeah. <laughs> Patrick would love to talk about the whole thing. I haven't read the whole thing yet. <laughs> it's it's really dangerous because like everything just kind of blends to me now. I, I've read this manga so many times already, so yeah, need to make sure. And yeah, I love Vagabond, by the way. Uh, for those of you who don't know about this, uh, yeah, Vagabond is one of my favorite manga, and Takehiko Inoue is one of my favorite manga artists. I think uh, I came into Vagabond through reading Slam Dunk first, and Slam Dunk to this day is still my favorite manga series, uh, favorite sports manga series, sorry. And after hearing at, at first that he was going to be doing Vagabond, I was just super excited because I always wanted to know more about uh, Musashi Miyamoto, and I know that there's the novel by Eiji Yoshikawa, which, well, Vagabond is adapted from that. But I haven't read that one. And yeah, because of that, I was super excited to read Vagabond adaptation by Takeko Inoue. And it lived up to every part of my expectation. Well, it exceeded by miles. <laughs> yeah, I love this manga. And yeah, I love it so much, really. I think the fact that it's not even completed. And I think that yeah. what you were describing is a sentiment a lot of people share. A lot of people absolutely love it. And it's pretty rare to absolutely love something that's not finished <laughs> usually people need the conclusion it's funny because sean which he'll uh chat in a second to say his uh overall general thoughts initially but uh he's even said i don't want to know anything about this because it's a real person in history he's like i don't mm -hmm. want to know anything about him because i'm waiting for this manga to be completed so he doesn't <laughs> want to be spoiled that's how much he he loves this manga <laughs> i might be waiting a long time though that's yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I think it's been a few years since I read that one for the first time, but uh, one of my favorites, of course, the art is unreal, and by that I mean it's very real. It looks very real, uh, but yeah, it's, it's I, I don't know if it's my, quite my favorite, but it's, it is up there in, in terms of like my favorite mangas. And so. some of the art style itself, it seems like I don't want to put down any other art. I mean, art is subjective and what you like is is different from person to person. Um, I know some manga, the art is kind of a little bit more on the simple side, but it actually ends up looking so clean and pretty and crisp. And the art in this is it has so much detail and there's so much going mm. on, but it just I can only imagine how long it takes to yeah. do any volume yeah. of this because some of the individual panels, I wonder how long some of them take because there's so much detail in the hair and just the the action scenes are done so well also. Um, but it's, it's kind of philosophical. So it's some of the little details in the first arc when you see, and I'm going to say this individual's name, I'm sure, uh, a little wrong, but I, I titled him Save You for Later <laughs> because there's a character that Takizo interacts with early on who has this kind of, I'm not, I want to fight you, but I'm going to wait until this is honorable and fair and that it's actually you at your best. But anyway, there's a conversation between the two of them at one point and they're talking about like kind of being ensnared and in, in what's going on with other people, and what's going on outside themselves. And you see the little details of the bugs in like there's a spider in the web and all those little things in the background and then something i noticed too is that obviously they're very capable the artist is very capable of drawing the most detailed beautiful things but every now and then there will be a panel where it's just the character and then basically nothing else or it's the character mm. and his father and nothing else or it's just a silhouette and it stands out in comparison to the panels that have a ton of detail and I also just think it's interesting that the artwork is there. I've seen that people have specific panels that they can remember. They'll be like, mm. oh, this panel. And the fact that there is individual panels that are that memorable, I think just says a lot about, because like Sean said, it's realistic looking. 
I feel yeah. like if it was more magical looking or something, there'd be the moments that look really over the top. And it's the fact that it looks so real. And yet there's so much artistic, uh, I guess, not liberty. What am I trying to say? That there's just so so much to the artist's own style that they're putting in to make the scenes come to life. I don't know. I just think the art's really good. I've always had a soft spot for sketch art. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I It's my favorite kind of art. It just, to me... I don't know what it, it's like moving. Mm. <laughs> I just think it's so well done. And also just, sorry, I'm going off. And I said, I would let you guys kind of take the reins and, show, <laughs> and my cameras as I'm going crazy, the camera's going crazy. Um, I'll just, I'll, I'll press pause and let you guys kind of <laughs> add a, a, a few more thoughts there. If you have any uh, more thoughts about the art itself. I would say this though. Well, it's not only about the art, but more like kind of general thoughts, I guess. But uh, I read Vagabond multiple times now, and I read and I read this manga pretty much during my um, well during my different stage in my in my life, and every time I read it, it hits differently. And I think this is the kind of manga that a lot of the topics being discussed here really well. They are they are really indeed suitable for adults. They are really in, not only just the first arc but everything beyond. I, I know that Vagabond is so often related to well the action scenes are amazing well it is it is amazing but beyond that there are still so much deeper themes included and that was reflected immediately in the first arc even though it's only about uh first uh, one and a half volume <laughs> right. yeah yeah i i have a lot that i um because i did a, a review of the first arc over on my regular channel and mm. um some of the things that stood out to me, and I think this is touching on what you were saying of how heavy and deep immediately is. One of the things is the internalizing of outside perspectives. Mm -hmm. And you see, I think I have a quote here too, um, of I'm the son of a demon and I deserve to die. Do I really deserve to live? And just the fact that initially he seems to really put value in whenever people call him a demon, he kind of like looks happy about having that description given to him, assigned to him. And I don't, I don't know. It's almost like when you see, and this is going to get kind of heavy and dark, but when a child has had their own parent be abusive to them, then they, because their parent is like their entire world, mm -hmm. they take a lot of satisfaction and happiness out of, fulfilling whatever it is their parent wants of them. And so you'll see them do things that are very self-destructive, but they're kind of doing it as a, look, aren't you proud of me? Mm -hmm. And so you see his father and you don't get a lot. And I know you, yeah. you both know more than me, but very quickly you get hints of his father being really cruel with him, his mother abandoning him. And so you can only imagine that deep down he wants uh, something. He wants some kind of connection a little bit, but he, hasn't had the ability to explore that or feel that. And so with that whole idea of people calling him a demon, it's like he's fulfilling what his father kind of put on him. But then when you see at the end of this arc, which is the really emotional part with the monk, and I have that quote here too, um, which I will say I left out a part where the monk starts to say this and he's like, that sounded really good. <laughs> and he's like, proud of himself. <laughs> but um where he says there is no light for those who do not know darkness live on and endure the shadows and brightness shall come your way. And I just think that it's, it's so sad to see this individual who has been misunderstood and already determined by other outside perspectives, who he is, what he is, what his worth is. Mm -hmm. And he never really has a chance to be himself. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, issues with his father drives a lot of his his actions. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, <laughs> and you know, not to be like oh, I've read the series, but I I think uh, Takezo, I mean, his growth is not even near completion. Um, you know, at the end of this first arc, and, and not yeah. not for. A good long time. I mean, I, I think he's exercising these same demons for a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit. Um, yeah. And I and I think like I don't know what what I what I found 
interesting about the first arc, I mean, when you read it, is he's not in super likable. I mean, at, at the end of the day, like he's, I mean, he went to war to uh, become a hero. I mean, in this sort of kind of idealized fashion, um, I think you see him and Matahachi. Um, maybe uh, Matahachi a little bit. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, God, may, I hate that guy. <laughs> I know. This is so much. <laughs> They're both. He's the worst. I, I had yeah. myself muted. And I did the same thing. I was like, Lech. <laughs> I have. Sorry, I'm derailing a little bit here, but I have to show you that I have the characters listed, and I have Matahachi, and I put in parentheses Weasel. Weasel. <laughs> He's the worst. Anyway, He's sorry. He's the worst. He's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm glad because when I, you know, I read the arc and I was like talking about how I'm, you know what, I'm going to stop. Go ahead, Sean, and finish what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so anyways, they both have this conception of war as being this glorious thing mm -hmm. and then it's not and there's all this death and and violence that they witness and but at the same time, I mean, Manahashi is still trying to prove that I can kill a man, you know, like, like there's like this, this ideal of what I think manhood's supposed to be. And I think uh, Takezo gets that from his father too. And I think uh, he, cha he continues to chase that. I mean, his, I have to become invincible under the sun, hmm. you know, mantra, I think is really driven by this society where, that is how he thinks he will gain respect is through his fighting prowess. And anyways, I'm just saying like, it's a long road ahead of, uh, I mean, it's good that we ended that arc with him not killing himself, but he's got, there's, there's a lot of, of that growth so that still needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll add to that. I like that. It's not because sometimes stories can fall into this trap of the character has this big aha moment and then they're forever changed. And realistically, mm -hmm. that's not how people operate. A lot of times, I mean, I've actually seen therapists talk about when you have something that you're struggling with, you might need 10, 15, 20 years of therapy before you really get through everything that you've because I mean, think about how long your childhood is and how many mm -hmm. years and your most I guess, susceptible years, the years that you're like a sponge, you're soaking everything up. And if you're soaking everything up for a decade or more, then it makes sense that it would take a decade or more to kind of unravel all of that. And so I like that it's not like, oh, I'm all better now <laughs> after this monk had a tough love moment with me. But uh, <laughs> I... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we want to get into how much we don't like Matahachi already. Should we already just jump into it? <laughs> or did you want to add more to it? <laughs> oh, God, seriously, I hit that guy so much. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> every, time I I re every time I reread this, I always thought, oh, God, but I have to read about him again. <laughs> and, and he, he, he gets worse. I mean, like, so much worse. So much worse. <laughs> like, it's, it's like he starts off terrible and he gets so much worse and it's like gosh Even in the first arc he's so terrible darn it. already I yeah mean, uh, so sorry <laughs> Shin Men Takezo is trying to, to win against his opponent and then he's out there fucking in the bush oh my god <laughs> oh my god it was insane insane <laughs> he's so stupid I'm I mean <laughs> yes that is one of the moments where and he's shouting Takezo is shouting for him like if you're alive uh, like yeah. let me know tell me and he's just at first he's like i'm scared and then he's like mm, like you said let me go have some fun and uh i <laughs> talked about um the fact that i think i have a lot of issues with him already and i haven't yeah, even gotten yeah. to the it gets so much worse <laughs> but so one of the themes i think that stands out is in abandonment it kind of ties takizo and atsu together in a lot of ways mm. poor atsu she's so sweet but um matahachi i said is like the physical embodiment of abandonment he mm. because he is supposed to be there he's like oh he's my best friend mm -hmm. and then he is a like I even was telling Sean, okay, I get being scared. I get being scared that there's all these enemies and maybe you get frightened and you lock up. But he clearly wasn't too scared because he was able to perform other physical yeah. activities. <laughs> like, so that alone. And then just him being like, oh, 
oh well with Atsu <laughs> and you're like what are you doing and then he <laughs> lets um and then Takizo who's actually got some decency goes back to tell I'm just I know they call her granny even though it's his yeah. mom but he goes back to tell her and to tell Atsu and then they because they have this idea of who Takizo is it's like Madahachi never has to take accountability for his own actions because he mm. knows how people see Takizo. So he can always kind of be like, I was just misled by, by Takizo. You know how he is. And so he just never has to take accountability for his actions. And then Takizo is trying to be honorable. And he now he's hunted by all these people because they mm. have these preconceived notions of who he is. Ugh, Marahachi. And I don't Whoa. even have as much, I don't have as much context. <laughs> if you think he'll ever own up to anything. No, no. It's, no, no, no. It's, 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 it doesn't happen. It so, doesn't happen. Patrick, tell me more about your hate of Marahachi. <laughs> no, no. no, but, but seriously. And it's not only him. I hate his mom as well. His mom is awful too. But to be fair, to look at it more empathically, but uh, well, his it, it is his mom. So, well, she, she must uh, care about her son. She's in but, denial. Yeah, she's in denial, or she's <laughs> always trying to think that her uh, her son cannot do all these awful things. Right. But Matahachi, yeah, there's no redemption for him. <laughs> I do like the moment when, uh, well, not this exact thing, but when. Um, Takizo is kind of tied up within the tree and he hears mm. Atsu kind of decide like, no, he, Marahachi, he made this decision. You're not my family at this point. And he thinks good for you, Atsu. And I just, I like Atsu so much. And I like mm. that the monk describes her as, so I want to touch on something Sean said earlier, one of the themes and something that Takizo seems to be struggling with is his father has instilled in him this idea of, what it is to be a man and it's very much tied to killing and being strong and being the strongest and then you see the monk kind of label atsu as the strongest person because she's mm. the one that's the most able to be vulnerable and this thing that takizo is feels like he's not allowed to be at any point and i also noted that at the end of that arc when there's that nice quote uh that the monk talks about then there will be light again and then in the next panel, Atsu shows up. And it's like, she's she's the lovely one. She's the mm. like silly, happy. And I want to add, so <laughs> the humor in this is actually kind of surprising because it's so heavy and because it's so violent. And I know I was just talking about the monk, but I just, in the, in the prep for this, uh, I have quotes listed. And then one of the things for Sean, because he thought this was hilarious, is... <laughs> that one. just the, <laughs> the fact that the monk is just like whoops you know it's we're out in the forest <laughs> it's passing wind you know you gotta, do what you gotta do yeah yeah what's the name of the monk again is it Takuan? uh it? yeah 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 i think that's yeah. right Ta Takuan, right yeah yeah okay yeah i kind of forgot the name it's been a while since i read a vagabond again yeah. I so we're talking about funny moments and uh my my prep for this was kind of just, you know, reviewing quickly the the first volume or so, but uh I can't remember why. I think it's because one of the people hunting uh Takizo like comes on to Atsu, right? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh cuz then at some point a servant like pats her or gives her a hug but it's like being nice and then she just like punches him and then she's like men are all the same <laughs> or something like that and he's like oh i was just trying to help <laughs> i found that funny yeah that, there is a bit of uh, light-hearted moments in this dark manga though so yeah it's kind of it's kind of helpful to help that things doesn't get too bleak yeah not just in the first arc but in yeah, in the rest of the series as well also just trying to feed him the rice yeah, uh, and she just like poking him in the face. She's that's like, that's one of my favorite moments. Yeah, I like that part a lot. <laughs> and he, he looks so unhappy. He's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing is he he's such a serious character, and I feel like a lot of times with those types of characters, there's this tendency to always make them look super cool. And with him, you see him have these moments of being kind of derpy a little bit. 
which I, I wasn't expecting because I, I guess my idea of what Vagabond would be, I thought it would be continuously serious and action packed. Mm-hmm. And like we've talked about, there's a lot of other really great, great moments. I mean, getting back to the kind of sadder moments too. another quote, um, is the, why was I born if only to be abandoned and shunned? Mm-hmm. It's just, Ooh, it's so it. powerful. Yeah. I know it's <laughs> sorry. I'm getting all whiny. I just, <laughs> I, I think, I think, uh, I mean, I think you're, you're right. in The preconceptions, like, you know, if I'm told like, this is a manga with samurai, it's like, okay, there's going to be action scenes, but yeah, I think the further you get in, like, the action scenes are actually kind of few and far between. I mean, there there's like some, like there's some big ones for sh- yeah. for sure. Yeah. But I mean, there's also like long stretches of hardly any. I mean, it'll just be kind of these kind of character moments. And um, I mean, it's, it's a nice balance of both mm-hmm. of them. Yeah, totally. The action at the beginning too, I think it's, I think there is this impression almost that it's shocking for the sake of being shocking, but I took it more like the violence looks truly violent where it doesn't look well. I mean, I it's drawn so well that you could say it looks cool, but Mm. it's, it's showing how graphic and disgusting violence can be. So I don't think that it's meant to be this shock value sort of thing. I think it's more to show that it's kind of disgusting and it's not, to not use a very great word, but it's just like, it's not cool (laughs) to be, to be violent like that. Yeah. I I think some of it's very raw. I mean, like there's, there's like parts of this manga where there's, they're almost like dueling and it's almost like this honor bound thing. And then there's moments of like, intense battle where they're mm. just like going all out limbs are flying off that sort of thing <laughs> yeah. right this isn't this isn't fun anymore you know what i mean yeah. like this is this is a level above uh dueling so uh yeah i agree i, I think the i don't think it's for shock value but i mean i think uh, it's there's a point to being graphic mm. with the violence oh i think it is absolutely graphic in plenty of in plenty of pl- places, but yeah, I, I never thought of it to be done for the sake of shock value. I never thought of it that way. And it is, uh, speaking of humor, because Slam Dunk, the previous manga by the author, is actually super funny because it's his sport, sports manga, right? So it was kind of a surprise to actually approach Vagabond from this, uh, from, from his previous work, and then approaching Vagabond to be such a, a much, a, much darker. It's much darker than slam down obviously a tonal <laughs> yeah. shift yeah total it, it, it was a total tonal shift so when you got into it did you have this idea that it would be maybe funnier or a little bit lighter or were you expecting it to be as serious and almost philosophical as it ends up being i i did i certainly didn't expect it would be that philosophical but as i said the first time i think i read vagabond i cannot remember what was it in middle school or was it in high school i cannot remember but the first time I read it, well, I was in high school, so I just thought that, wow, this guy is so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was still young, okay? I was still young. I want to be invincible that, under the sun. Yeah, <laughs> I want to be invincible under the sun, too. This guy is super inspiring, something like that. <laughs> yeah. but, now, but now... You're just uh, hitting people with wooden swords, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> but now just, uh, I think it was two or three years ago, I read Vagabond, and I, I thought, wow, this guy is wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, one thing that I think that I um, noticed in the first volume and something I found kind of sad is that I think that he truly thinks he has a purpose and that he's found his purpose because there's the panel that's somewhat of a flashback where you see him kind of putting on his helmet and getting ready for war. And Sean was touching on this earlier about how he thought I'm going to become a war hero and then everybody's going to respect me. This is my mm-hmm. purpose. And so one thing I noted is that I feel like this whole first arc is sort of the death of misguided ideals. Like you have to kind of let go of what you thought your purpose was or what you thought your value was placed in, which again, I think that ties into the childhood trauma thing where you kind of have to rework. It's sad because you look back then you think, 
what a waste. Like, what has my life even been for then? And I think that's why you see him break down at the end of this arc is because he has let so many outside perspectives shape him. And then now he's realizing what has he even lived for this entire time, all these years kind of wasted, if you, if you will. And so it's one of those things though, where it has to, you have to let go of those ideals before you can, I don't even think ideals is the right way to put it. Cause that almost sounds more promising, like a good thing, but what you thought your purpose was, you have to let it go so that you can start from start fresh again. And uh, before you read Vagabond for the first time, do any of you know the story of Musashi? No. Va- uh, only a little bit. I don't know much about it. Do you want to? Do you want to educate? No, no, us? no, 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 no. I mean, everyone, everything is pretty much spoiler. <laughs> That's yeah, what, but yeah. I did. But I did know a bit of Musashi. Not too much as well, but I did know a bit of Musashi before. Well, entering this book. That's why I was so excited about it. I mean, we can still buy his book, you know, right now. Book of the Five yeah. Rings. Yeah, Book of the yeah. Five Rings. Yeah. I've seen a, an edition of it at Barnes and Noble before. Yeah, yeah. So it's I, really I, and one and, of and Patrick, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think where the manga is right now, where we left off, if I remember right, he's starting to kind of formulate some of those ideas, right? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I, I think that's pretty cool. That's why I'm like, man. This is, I feel bad doing this where I'm like, just draw faster, you know, because like, <laughs> you know, because I know it's incredible and it's incredibly uh, uh, time consuming. But yeah, I, I think yeah. he's at an interesting point where uh, the character is starting to explore these these ideas. So yeah, I'm kind of like, I want to that, read that the next one. Know, he's just a super perfectionist. I think that's yeah. the issue when it comes to this manga. As 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 we can see from the artwork themselves, they they take a lot of time. And it, I saw from plenty of interviews that he's often not satisfied with how they turns out, which to me sounds insane. <laughs> because, right. <yeah. laughs> anybody that's else would be anybody yeah. else would be like that's right i'm really good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have you yeah. um going off a little bit have you seen that ghosts uh ghost of tsushima has some nods to to him uh, which to the one? real like i think you uh, to, i think to, to the real Musashi. yeah oh, i'm pretty sure oh. i think there's which some one? nods oh, i'll have to find I, I it again and, and send it one. to you <laughs> yeah, i'll have to yeah. send it to you um anyway i know that the first arc there's not it's not very long so there's not a whole lot and i know that both of you don't want to spoil things um for this <laughs> and so i know it's it's maybe a little bit shorter than future because other arcs are i think longer, longer. some of them they're yeah. kind of uneven as far as some of them are really short and then some of them take a lot of time right yeah yeah i keep I, i'll have to like uh for the next one actually read the chunk because i keep thinking of things i'm like wait i don't think that's happened yet i should probably yeah. <laughs> oh, i shouldn't say anything about it yeah but i i mean i'm really excited i liked this first arc i think the very very opening didn't give quite the indication of where it could go yeah. and i think we we talked about this um before but the fact that usually you have to give manga a little bit of time yeah um so the opening does kind of have that like oh cool so much fighting and they're fighting these brigands and whatnot and then there's the opening with them with the woman and Matahachi and all that stuff and yeah. then you kind of start to quickly go in a different direction um so when I first started it I was like oh, okay and then as we were moving away from that is when I thought it started to get really good but I haven't had the chance to read more yet because mm. uh, I've been kind of holding and waiting so that we could actually have these discussions together so mm-hmm. I'm excited and I'm, I'm excited to be the newbie and it'll be fun if uh, later when we chat about it, if I'm going to be like, oh, wait, I had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and also this language works kind of, uh, I mean, when I read Vagabond, I always read it in the Indonesian translated edition. So it's kind of, oh. it's kind of, it's kind of fun to actually uh, read all the quotes in English. <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so do they yeah. have um, slightly different phrasing? Like, mm-hmm. do they use... Nah, or is it pretty it's, it's, similar? It's pretty similar, yeah. Pretty similar. Mm. Yeah. That's really cool. I, it does make <laughs> me curious about a lot of it. I mean, 
<laughs> so I, I, I am, I feel like for education's sake, we have to know, um, how is, uh, how is this written in, <laughs> in your edition? <laughs> I will open that later and show it to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious what, because that's not the usual word in English that yeah. they use for it. So I don't know. <laughs> it's more just like a sound effect. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of it's kind of happy sounding, you know. Yeah, like, that's like, the thing. Oh, it's it's, yeah. it's sort of a small sound, but there's like a gust. Yeah. Aren't there like leaves wind, yeah. flying or something yeah. in that moment? <laughs> And Atsu's like, her face is all shocked. What, what, I, what I think is funny about that is like, it's almost like, you know, the, the camera angle, if you will, uh, is like kind of zoomed in on his butt there. It's just like, you know, like, it just like shoots out. It's a great, great moment. It is so out of nowhere a little bit that you're like, you almost don't notice it for a second. You're like, what's happening? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, who would have thought that that would be in the middle of this really deep uh manga about yeah. this real life samurai but anyway i'm really excited to read more um i know like i was saying that this first arc is pretty short but i feel yeah. like it starts out that last uh those last few panels in particular and there's one again i don't think i can show it sadly um for potential copyright but hmm. especially with vagabond i think that they're very strict with it but there's the one panel that I think kind of epitomizes a lot of what I was talking about, where you just sort of see all of these voices and the way it's drawn is very chaotic and not mm. exactly real looking. And it's it takes up a ton of space on the page. And it's just all these people's thoughts of who he is and what he's supposed to be and hating him and telling him like, it's like the first time he hears the word demon in association with himself as a bad thing. Like he's finally accepting this probably isn't something to aspire to be and he is just like that noise that i think a lot of people experience the outside pressure you hear and this can be applied to so many things because obviously most of us are not uh samurais <laughs> so um, i mean yeah. to use a very random example i think a lot of people feel a lot of shame when it comes to i don't know like their body image or something and they mm. hear like oh i should be more in shape. I should be slimmer. I have stretch marks here and they have all these thoughts of, and it's like, what does that really matter? What does that have to do with who you are as a person? I know that's not quite the same thing, but the way it's drawn is it depicts that outside noise really mm. well. And I think it kind of, like I said, it, it captures everything from this first arc, I think. And then you have that hopeful and really sad though. I mean, when he's like banging his head on the yeah. rock. But and then yeah. they give him a hug, <laughs> and yeah. it ends on a hopeful note at least. Uh, so I think this, this, this is your first time reading through the manga. My first time, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was saying I I look forward to seeing if I'm totally off on some of this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think is... I think my my final thought is, I guess going forward with it, the for me like a lot of the manga is also this idea of healthy pursuit of excellence versus obsession. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I think it is interesting, like seeing someone pursue something, trying to be at the highest level. I mean, I think, I think, you know, that could be a sport that could be an instrument, you know, musical instrument in this case, it happens to be swordsmanship, mm -hmm. but there is like that fine line between, like I said, healthy pursuit versus uh, unhealthy. Yeah. And I think a lot of time he tends towards unhealthy, but I think, you know, you start to see him get some clarity um, as the journey continues. So it's a good, yeah, good it's really manga. Patrick, without giving spoilers, can you articulate what it is about this manga that makes it one of your favorites? Well, first, uh, I mean, of course, I love the artworks, right? Uh, and of, hold on, okay, that one cannot be talked about. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, but, but I love the artworks, and then uh, the, as as Sean just said right now, uh, the philosophical stuff actually hit me much better now on reread. On the first time, I will have to say that uh, I think as you go through this, uh, Al, uh, eventually you will get to the point where actions are pretty much non-existent. Yeah, uh, I think it was 
uh, in the later volumes, in, in the much later volumes. But yeah, actions are pretty much non-existent. And the first time I read through that, I was disappointed. I was disappointed. Yeah. I was I was bored. And I think one of my favorite things about Vagabond is how uh, Takeko in a way balance all the actions and also the philosophical and the character development. That's what I love uh, at first. And now on reread, after do- doing a reread about yeah two years ago or last year, uh, after doing a reread, I come to th- I come to realize that everything was planned out since the beginning, and I know that he's adapting this from the novel, right? And this is his circle fiction. Not everything is accurate to the history. Sorry, but now I've come to realize that those uh, solemn moments where there are no actions, this is what uh, Takehiko Inoue is leading up to, even with all the actions. And I love it. I love it so much. And I think everything about Vagabond just clicked with me. Yeah. And I love Samurai. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Who a bonus. Doesn't? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I can't wait to keep going. I think that's something I find in books even now is, you know, because you, you can apply this to novels as well. And a lot of the same things that we read. I do like a good action-packed fantasy here and there. Mm. But for me, it's so much more about those introspective Hmm. moments with the characters and really diving deep into who they are and and why they are the way they are and those sorts of things hit a lot harder than the oh cool awesome fight scene and and of course it's fun to get a good fight scene here and there but i think like you were saying that those other things are they hit a lot harder so i i can't wait to keep going and i can't wait to keep chatting i think it'll be fun and it'll be fun when we can finally get to spots that the two of you don't have to go uh, and then hold your tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's... Any final thoughts, Sean? No, 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 no. final thoughts. This, I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I mean, to, I think, I, like I said, I think I will actually read, read along, and it'll be fun to, to do a reread of it. Yeah, I will do some reread as well. It's yeah. I never complained about rereading Vagabond. Except for <laughs> except for Matahachi. Yeah, for, yes. yeah, 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 that guy. So, so, sorry, sorry for cursing, by the way, earlier. It's really oh, hard okay. for me not to get triggered talking about him. <laughs> he's just the worst. He's the worst. <laughs> That's okay. There's always a certain character. I mean, I feel that way about... Okay, I know that you like the Greenbone saga, but I was yeah. telling Sean about it, and I'm like, freaking Hilo is so stupid. <laughs> I'm like, I know you like Hilo because yeah, he is yeah. a great like he he's a he is written well because he's written like a real person. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like this guy, and then <laughs> Tao from you know Rage of Dragons. It's the same like you're like you dummy. Why did you shout the guy's name when you were trying to sneak up on it or whatever? Like, oh god, so... that one was so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I there are. Fun, yeah. I don't think you understand quite yet how much, like Matahachi may be your least favorite character, God, like ever. Oh like my God, man! It's it's there's. I'm just thinking of like one thing he does where I was like, oh. dude, <laughs> got really mad. So. Oh, I I kind of look. I mean, I do love a good. I hate this character. You, yeah, you'll character, you'll hate you him. You know the love to hate. I look forward to that. Um, I don't love I'm... to hate him. I hate him. That's... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's just the worst. There's it's a character the in a in a book that I don't uh, imagine either of you will probably ever pick up, but there's a book called Small Favors, and the main character's brother in that book. I'm like, you are the worst, and he mm. just like does things that screws his entire family over, and they're trying to like make sure they have enough food because they kind of live very in a very rural. Uh, environment where they're kind of relying on the food that they get and the the trade that they get it's kind of like a horror fantasy and so Mm -hmm. they aren't able to go to neighboring towns to bring things in because something's in the woods and anyway and so the stupid brother like always is just taking whatever he wants and then wandering (laughs) off and then when the sister tries to talk to him about it and say things like you know maybe we should not do that because you know we're a team and he's just like ugh and he's just always <laughs> so annoying and he has the most obnoxious reactions and then there's a I, I'm trying not to spoil it and it's How do so you spell ugh? How do you spell <laughs> <it>? <laughs> There's a there's a whole thing too where he's in love with this girl and uh she is like I don't want to spoil it for 
anybody that there might be crossover between Vagabond and this random book. But yeah. <laughs> um, this girl that he's apparently in love with, and then she's sharing something with him. And then he's just starting to say horrible things to her. And he's like insisting that she must be having an affair and like all these things. And she's so sweet and nice. And he's just like refuses to take any responsibility for his actions. Uh, I hate that character. So I wonder <laughs> if he'll, if Matahachi will top this, this character. I don't know. I almost feel like I need to reread small favors and mm. then read the parts about Matahachi being the worst. And then, I mean, I almost want to make the two of you read this book so that we can have like a chart <laughs> of who's worse. Just kidding. You don't have to read that book, but it is, it is, it is entertaining. Mm hmm. I will check out the book though. Just curious. <laughs> Just, want Just to for see that what, guy. Book. Just yeah, for yeah, that yeah. guy. I yeah. almost want to go through and find the passages and and let you know some of the things because the amount of times I was like, "This guy, this guy, are you serious?" <laughs> and like, I was sad that it's not more popular because you know, if something happens in Stormlight, I don't even want to say the character's name, but there's a character in Stormlight that everybody is like no especially like a certain <laughs> scene in oathbringer where you're like no he's this person yeah yeah <laughs> and everybody can relate and everybody can chat about it and be like that's right and then you get the edgy people that say like they did nothing wrong and you're like oh, Stop it, it. <laughs> but this character in this book it's not that popular so i i feel like i'm like i does anybody understand what this <laughs> like, I, I hate this person i think um i think with mata hachi and and i think it sounds like maybe with the small favors character too. Monahachi's terrible because he's seems like a real person. You know, like yeah. like you could see a real person Behaving making every like making every decision he makes, and it every decision he makes is terrible. It, there's yeah. not a single good decision ever. It's like and every single like, bad decision is put into this guy, and yeah, there he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. <laughs> That's why he drives me crazy because you're like, he's so close to like, if even just like one time he was like, I'm going to do the right thing, yeah. they'd be like, progress, but nah, no, no you can progress. always, you can always plan on him making the worst decision, yeah, pretty much, yeah, yeah. or you can't even plan because it's going to be worse than you ever imagined. <laughs> Because you're a decent yeah. person who can't even fathom being that awful. <laughs> this makes me want to do a whole video on the characters that we hate the most. Just have oh, a yeah, yeah. Of, like different <laughs> manga, anime, video game, you know, all these different characters. We'll get Alan in here to rant about Sephiroth. Have you heard of <laughs> Sephiroth rant, Petri? No, no. He's like, <laughs> it's so, I'll have to send you the video. Um, but he just rants so much about how Sephiroth isn't that cool and he doesn't get the hype. Oh, he's like he just has like a long sword. That's he's just edgy. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on! He, he always makes controversial opinion, especially about the <laughs> Hobbit. The Hobbit is uh, what, yeah, he hates is, hobbits. He hates Sam. <laughs> like <laughs> come on. <laughs> yes, I mean. Yeah, I like how so often Alan gets brought up in videos that he has nothing to do with, but he's just, yeah. we love Alan. So, well, anyway, <laughs> to summarize, uh, I can't wait to read more Vagabond. I'm excited for Sean to be rereading it and the two of us to kind of be reading it together. And then Patrick, I don't know, if, like you said, you might maybe yeah. um, be rereading some more, but it'll be really fun to kind of come back together and have these chats. So thanks so much for joining. It was a lot of fun. Can't wait yeah. to get further in, but yeah. I'll see you later. Bye. -bye. <laughs>